welcome to the side event of the um, Sea of Solutions 2020, um, entitled Eliminating Marine Plastic Policy, Science, Business, and Stakeholder Actions. This is being co-organized by the uh, Partnership in Environment Management for the Seas of East Asia, uh, PEMC, uh, as well as the Ocean Policy Research Institute of the Sasekawa Peace Foundations. Um, my name is Masanori uh, of the OPRI. Um, I really thank you all uh, for joining as a speakers and an audience. And uh, this event is intended to mobilize views and perspectives of the multi stakeholders working in East Asia to eliminate marine plastics. I'm very pleased to see you all. And um, um, at the beginning, um, I just uh, make a brief introduction of the topic and the background of this side event. And uh, then thereafter, uh, Ms. Amy Gonzalez, the executive director of PEMC, uh, will give us a regional perspectives to be followed by the uh, various speakers from different countries in East Asia. Um, let me just um, uh, show you um, the slide and just... Uh, So I hope uh, you can see the slide uh, on that I have prepared to share with you. Um, basically, uh, in East Asia, um, this marine plastic is uh, one of the challenges uh, along with the other um, environmental or marine uh, challenges. Uh, what being said uh, so far based on some scientific finding is that uh, East Asia is a major source of marine plastics. Uh, this is one of the diagrams that shows the volumes of the um, uh, marine litters coming from the land-based areas. And you see the size of the circle. Uh, the larger the circle is, the greater the volume of the marine plastics. So many of the uh, East Asian countries uh, rather said to be the source of the uh, marine data or marine plastics. Um, the um, many countries uh, in East Asia are part of the different regional groups and the countries. And for example, uh, last weekend, there was a meeting of the G20 uh, hosted by the government of Saudi Arabia and the many countries uh, leaders have attended this uh, um, summit uh, held in online. And the leaders declarations that was adopted to, uh, last weekend uh, contains one paragraph, for instance, to reaffirm the G20 countries commitment to reduce additional pollution by marine plastic litter as articulated by the Osaka Blue Ocean Visions and to end illegal and reported and unregulated fishing. The G20, this uh, Osaka Blue Ocean Vision, was spearheaded by the Japanese government when it hosted the G20 summit uh, in Osaka last year. And this Osaka Blue Ocean Vision, for instance, in paragraph 39, and stipulate that the countries would aim to reduce additional pollution by marine plastic litter to zero by 2050 through a comprehensive life cycle approach. The question is, of course, whether the 2050 is early enough to resolve these marine plastic challenges. Nonetheless, uh, this was uh, epoch making that uh, many of the countries, uh, particularly the member countries of G20, and uh, reaffirm the commitments to reduce marine plastics. APEC, this Asia Pacific Economic Corporation, also adopted last year the roadmap of marine debris. Uh, in that um, roadmap, uh, it stipulated that the countries undertake uh, concrete steps to promote research and innovation, sharing of best practices, and enhancing cooperation increasing access to financing, facilitating private sector engagement, 
vis-a-vis -vis to eliminating marine plastics. Uh, ASEAN country, for instance, uh, adopted also last year the ASEAN framework of action on marine debris, uh, where the countries have agreed to promote policy support and planning, research innovation and capacity building, public awareness, education and outreach, and private sector engagement. Of course, the United Nations environment program that is hosting together with other partners, this uh, solution, uh, CEO Solution 2020 is uh, one of the major UN agencies uh, promoting uh, marine debris eliminations. Um, the, what actions are actually needed? This is uh, what we have to address based on the conditions of various countries and the local communities. We have to promote recycling. We have to uh, we promote uh, um, alternative materials other than plastics. We promote uh, reusable and uh, returnable containers to reduce, reduce uh, the use of uh, plastics. And we, of course, have to uh, remove uh, the marine debris and the plastics that are already in the river and oceans and the many technologies and initiatives uh, undertaken in different parts of the countries and the world. So um, today's session, uh, we have um, a number of speakers from different sectors, government, UN agency, private sectors, and NGOs. And we hope that we can share some ideas and the recent initiatives. And that we hope that uh, we can stimulate our creative thinking uh, to promote more effective actions to eliminate marine plastics and uh, promote regional and international cooperation. And the turn maybe East Asia uh, uh, from the source of marine debris, but to the solutions uh, for eliminating marine debris. So this is a concept of this today's side event. And I hope that uh, we can have a, a productive um, discussions. So I just uh, stop uh, just sharing the slide and uh, I now uh, turn over to the microphone to Ms. Amy Gonzalez, Executive Director, uh, Partnership and Environment Management for the Seas of East Asia. PEMC is uh, one of the leading organizations for addressing uh, ocean um, challenges and promoting regional corporations. Uh, Amy, uh, thank you for joining us and you now have a microphone. Thank you very much, Masa-san. Um, I see many familiar faces here, friends. Uh, good morning. And uh, I wish this was a better time where we could all be in Bangkok to share experiences. Uh, and how has it been, you know, uh, over the past three years? So the title of my presentation is Regional Cooperation to Reduce Marine Plastics in East Asia. Next slide, please. As Masa uh, Sain has mentioned, there has been a lot of commitment and activity, you know, growing interest and political commitment to tackling plastic pollution at the global level. And in the East Asian Seas region as well, there has been growing recognition to tackle the growing scale of plastic pollution since it tangibly affects uh, the region's economy. We have uh, heard and read the APEX study, which estimates that the plastic pollution is costing the region's vibrant tourism, fishing, and shipping industries some US dollars, 1.3 billion. Now, uh, in the region also, we have had some commitments, and notably, uh, we have the Bangkok Ministerial Declaration signed by the ASEAN governments, apart from the APEC and other um, commitments that uh, uh, Masa San in his previous slide have mentioned. In the PEMC uh, partnership program, we also had a minis ILO ministerial declaration to tackle land and sea-based pollution at source. Now, we also have the PEMC network of learning uh, of local governments who have signed on to the commitment of, for the marine debris. So, you know, so from the regional, to national governments, local governments have seen, uh, have uh, provided a signal, a political signal to tackle this issue. Research have also uh, by the National University of Singapore have mapped out 
who are these players? And there are a lot, you know, and there are so many studies also, do, also being done on marine plastic litter in the East Asian seas. And so uh, we have public and private sectors taking action, not just notice, but taking action uh, that investing in solutions can bring benefits beyond the industries alone, you know. Local entrepreneurs are emerging with new plastic alternatives and initiating efforts that efforts that engage local communities. Uh, there are also system-wide solutions such as investing in waste management infrastructure. They are growing in priority. This will not only support the collection, processing, and recycling of plastic, but it will also help resolve the broader health and climate-related impacts that result from poorly Manage waste. Next slide, please. Now, in PEMC, uh, we have uh, uh, included this in the shared regional strategy and implementation plan for 2018 2022. Um, there are three uh, components strategies for of, of this plan, which has been signed by 11 country partners and 22 non country partners, including the local governments and learning centers. One is the enhancing the accession, accession and compliance with relevant international conventions that, uh, you know, uh, so this is broader than just plastic pollution because it's also tackled the UNSDG, Aichi biodiversity targets, IMO environmental related conventions, ASEAN cooperation plan for transboundary pollution, global plan of action for the protection of marine environment from land-based activities. At the country level, there has been so many uh, marine pollution loading reduction in partner countries tackling marine debris, plastics, microplastics, and nutrient uh, solutions. So, for example, Indonesia has led with a bold commitment to reduce plastic debris by 70% by 2025. I think we have a speaker from Indonesia who we could probably ask where is it, where are they on that target. Vietnam, uh, the last time I spoke with uh, Director T uh, at the Jeff uh, meeting hosted in Da Nang, uh, they were proposing a regional partnership in management of pl plastic waste in the Southeast Asia. So it would be good to know also uh, what has happened since then. The World Bank has launched a multi-donor trust fund in Indonesia to support investment in waste management. The Philippines has adopted uh, a sustainable marine uh, uh, sustainable production and consumption uh, action plan and have focused its efforts on rehabilitating and restoring uh, the many bays and rivers in the country, notably Manila Bay. Now, and I'm sure Malaysia, we will hear from Cheryl also on some of the accomplishments that they've been doing and, and they have done in, uh, in the country. The next one is to demonstrate good practices and experiences in integrated river basin and coastal area management for improved source to sea governance. So this is also broader than just plastic pollution, but will definitely touch also on solid waste management. This is a, a project that will start next year. Um, next slide, please. So what are these specific projects that we have? So I've already mentioned that the network of local governments, which uh, we have like 80, 80 local governments have signed onto a marine debris prevention initiative. At the ASEAN level, we have partnered with uh, Norway through NORAD and the Norwegian uh, Water Management Institute and CC Center for Southeast Asian Studies and the governments of Indonesia, and the Philippines to pilot a capacity building program to reduce marine litter in specific um, provinces. Uh, we have also partnered with the private sector, Coca-Cola, for integrated solid waste management. Concretely, this is recycling uh, uh, bottles, uh, you know, uh, dry uh, plastics, uh, waste that could be turned into chairs and tables for, for local sc schools. Uh, the, this project uh, that will start next year would be the Integrated River Basin Management also uh, with uh, ASEAN, JEF, and UNDP participation. We are also part of uh, the port waste uh, management through the Rethinking Plastics uh, Circular Economy Solutions to Marine Litter by the EU and GIZ. We will be working on a specific component on electronic uh, waste notification 
from ships to avoid um, ships dumping their waste into the sea, but, but bringing them to the shore. We have also sponsored, uh, as part of the preparation for the UN Decade of Ocean Science, working group on deoxygenation in Asia Pacific. Again, this is broader than uh, just plastic pollution, but we are only not, we're not tackling just the surface level, but also what's underneath um, the waters. And uh, last year, we hosted an expert meeting on microplastics in East Asia, uh, the Ministry of Oceans and fish, Fisheries. So these are examples of the projects, which gives you a microcosm of the many activities and many partnerships, collaboration that is happening in Asia. And, in, and this is just us. There are others also, uh, uh, regional initiatives like COBC uh, by UNEP and uh, even the banks, you know, even, even the bilaterals with the uh, aid agencies that are doing, um, not to mention countries doing their own uh, national projects as well. So what are some of the reflections after three years? What, uh, what have we learned and uh, what do we need to do? You know, the question, you know, we have a lot of this uh, regional initiatives. There's a commitment to tackle plastic pollution. So how do we, how do we ensure and maintain that this commitment stays and are really worked on uh, you know, with the proper capacity and collaborations in place to support full value chain of actors. Uh, and also, uh, you know, in practice and not just uh, in theory or some, uh, some partnerships. Next slide, please. So this is my last slide. You know, uh, with all these initiatives in the past three years, can we really respond to questions like, has there been progress in curbing plastic pollution? I think there have been. But uh, with the COVID pandemic, we, ha we have to ask ourselves, um, has it reversed the progress in transitioning away, for example, to single use plastic? So these are some of the questions that needs some answers also. So where have we, what have we, be, uh, what progress have we been made, uh, have been made and has COVID global pandemic slowed down the progress or not? The conclusion uh, from talking to people uh, is that it's still pretty much a work in progress. And at the regional level, what we need to be more effective would be the sharing and coordination of active of initiatives, especially amongst donors, so that we do not trip uh, on each other and we, we ensure co consist coordination and consistency and not duplication, you know, in impl and in uh, in all these initiatives. We need to also, uh, and this is already happening, uh, the ASEAN Working Group uh, for Coastal and Marine Environment is uh, very good in bringing uh, us together on in an open-ended session uh, once a year. And so I would encourage everyone to participate in that because I think that is one of the avenues where we have a sharing of initiatives among donors and implementing regional bodies. Um, we need to be uh, good at sharing baseline data, good practices, knowledge management, uh, in the you know monitoring methods, in historical and baseline data, because so that we don't have to in reinvent the wheel. Because studies and studies are being done uh, on the same things. Um, most importantly, I think from PEMSI's perspective would be. Uh, we should have more business cases and models on solid waste management and circular economy, and particularly a good practices uh, amongst the small medium enterprises, because um, I think there are some pilots, but they need to be surfaced and communicated uh, uh, more, some more, especially at forests like this. And this is a, a good platform also, the UNEPSIS of solution, I think it's a good platform in the sharing. Um, I hope we will we will see all these uh, efforts actually uh, also in in one uh, report or something. I don't know how they will all consolidate all this. And lastly, um, we have said that social inclusion, uh, any any um, any action on curbing plastic pollution or marine pollution uh, will not be successful without social inclusion. So we, uh, it would be good to have more documentation and models of formal integration of women and informal sector because they are also key actors in uh, tackling marine pollution. So I end there um, and uh, looking forward to the presentations at the national and local level as well.
Thank you. Thank you, Amy, uh, for highlighting the uh, activities of the premises. It's very impressive, uh, the list of the actions and uh, partners uh, for eliminating marine plastics. And you have also raised the very important questions, uh, for instance, uh, how we can really measure the impact of such activities in terms of elimination of marine plastics, and uh, also the implication of the COVID-19 vis-a-vis uh, -vis this uh, marine uh, debris and plastic eliminations. Uh, we hold the questions and of course audience, uh, colleagues, uh, you can uh, add your questions in the chat box. Uh, so we will address uh, after we listen to all the speakers. So let me just move on to the next speaker, uh, Dr. Myung-Gyao Ju, a research fellow of the OPRI SPF. Uh, who is uh, one of my colleagues, and she just joined OPRI a few months ago, and she has been undertaking the reviews of the monitoring of marine plastics in East Asia. Uh, she'll give us a talk entitled Progress and Challenges in Monitoring Marine Plastic Pollution in East Asia. And Dr. Myang Yeonju, uh, please take the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Meng Yao Zhu, and I'm from the Cecil Galapis Foundation, OPRI. And it's really my honor to have this opportunity for the presentation. So today, I will briefly introduce about the progress and challenges in monitoring marine plastic pollution in East Asia. So as we know, uh, marine plastic pollution is a very severe problem and grab much attention from the world because it's harmful to the marine uh, environment, marine lives, or even to our human beings. So let's say the figures uh, here, it showed that in 2015, there will be 20% of oil are used to um, make the plastic and the weight of the marine plastic will surpass the weight of the fish in the ocean. And the uh, table on right side shows the plastic, gener uh, pl plastic waste generation per year from the top 10 countries in the world. And it's obviously uh, much of them were just located in the East Asia. So in order to uh, solve or alleviate this problem, we need to know the current situation of the marine plastic pollution, especially the sonia problems, microplastics. The microplastic is uh, a very small piece of plastics and less than five millimeters in length. And in order to monitor microplastic, there are two steps needed. Uh, the first is field work, and the second is laboratory analysis. So at first, we need to use the net pump, core, and something to collect the microplastic from the seawater, seafloor, seashore, or even from the marine lives. Then and density separation and chemical treatment are done for these samples and uh, as a pre-treatment. And finally, uh, we use the stereo microscope and the spectral uh, uh, optical instrument to do the quantitative analysis to know the material size or contents of the, this mi microplastic in the ocean. And here, uh, I want to take side of the microplastic monitoring activities in Japan. Um, the implement institution implement implement time, area, method, and the mesh openings are shown in the tables. And we can find that uh, in Japan, there are many kinds of institution. For example, the um, Ministry of the Environment and some uh, university like Kyushu University, Tokyo University of Science, and the research centers, or even the local government are all take active actions on monitoring uh, microplastics. And on the whole, we can find that the implement area are uh, many 
uh, concentrated on the surface of the oceans and rivers, and the mesh size the uh, and the mesh size of the net they use are almost over three hundred micrometers. So finally, I want to talk about the challenge challenges in monitoring marine plastic pollution. Um, as we know, the sampling and the quantitative analysis for microplastic is not unified in the world. And the first challenge, I think, is just to standardize the sampling and quantitative analysis for microplastic. And the second one, I want to uh, aim at the 99% missing plastic problems. Uh, based on the current research, uh, only 1% of the pla uh, marine plastic were found in the marine, and the 99% plastic was just gone missing. So why this happened? I think maybe there will be three reasons. Uh, the first one is monitoring area is very limited now. It's almost on the surface of the sea. Uh, oceans or rivers. And the second one is few monitoring are uh, implemented in the sea floor and water column. And the last one is uh, over 300 micrometers are many monitored in the survey, while the data of smaller ones is very limited. So in the future, I think in order to solve this 99% missing plastic problems, we need to uh, enlarge and deepen the monitoring areas. And second, and in the meantime, we need to improve our uh, theoretical approach, approach, like the development of the numerical models for uh, regarding the plastic situation in the ocean. And thank you very much, that's all. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Uh, Mingyao Zhu. Uh, I think she highlighted the very important uh, elements that uh, in the monitoring of marine plastics, the methodologies uh, needs to be standardized and also the uh, sea floors uh, and the water column have to be also included as a part of the monitoring uh, seawater areas. And also the uh, uh, monitoring itself is still limited probably geographically as well. Uh, so we will address these uh, monitoring uh, challenges uh, in our discussion as well. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, presentations. Uh, now let me move on to the next speakers, uh, Dr. Kaurandi Chotichan Chewe Wong, uh, Director of Strategic Environment Research Center, National Research Council, Thailand. Uh, she was uh, the president of Thailand Environment Institute and has been addressing a wide range of environmental issues over, the, uh, over her career. Um, she today uh, will speak about money plastic, its impact and the solutions in Thailand. Uh, Dr. Kwan, uh, please uh, take a floor and I am supposed to share her PowerPoint slide um just uh, one second. <clears throat> so yeah, Dr. Kwan, uh, please uh, start uh, speaking. Um. Please unmute Kun Kwan. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my presentation is uh, data and information is come from the project and control department and department of marine and coastal. Um, when we uh, talk about the, the marine plastic waste, like we have concern about the waste management. And uh, we can say we, uh, we try to manage these situations after we got the, the, the ranking from the, from the, that you know, from the world. Right? Uh, next slide, please. Masonry, yes. Uh, if you see the 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 deep figures in the left hand side, figure is a uh, amount of solid waste in Thailand. Uh, Thailand is the uh, we covered. We have uh, 77 provinces, and we have uh, uh, solid waste allow uh, 
uh, 27.8 billion ton per year. And we can say we have uh, 27% not well management. But anyway, uh, when we talk about the, the plastic waste, marine plastic waste, it means we con uh, Thailand we focus to the 23 provinces. Uh, this uh, province is called to the sea. If you see in the in the right hand side, uh, normally the for the 23 provinces, the, we manage we, uh, waste uh, very well allow 84 percent, but then and, uh, we have the allow 16 percent or 1.8 million ton per year not well management. And if we in the in the gray picture. We found that uh, not well management is have uh, consists of the plastic waste allowed 12% or 200,000 200, uh, ton per year. And inside of plastic waste, uh, we have a uh, plastic waste to the sea is allowed 10 or 15% of the total plastic waste or allowed 20, uh, 21,000 ton per year. Next slide, please. If we want to know uh, the item of the this plastic waste that go to the sea, we can uh, Thailand we now we classify uh, half of them already. We found that the waste that go to the sea is uh, allow 20% is come from plastic shopping bags and single use plastic bags. And uh, for the packaging food, food packaging, we can uh, classify into item one is uh, Styrofoam food box is allowed 10%, and food packaging from another plastic bag allowed 8.8%. And if you see for the bottom, we have to classify for glass and plastic. We found that uh, uh, allow 15% is uh, come from bottoms, and allow plastic bottom is allowed 7.2%. And another that uh, Thai concern is allow is about the plastic straw. We found that uh, many people use it and. Uh, we found 5.1% is go to the seas. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, we can say Thai government, private sector, and uh, NGO, we work a lot for these issues. And the last year, we have a roadmap created by the, uh, the, the NGO and, and the government also. Uh, this roadmap is a uh, uh, between 2019 until 2030s. The objective of this roadmap is to reduce and stop the use of plastic and replace plastic with the, the uh, environmental friendly materials. The output of this roadmap, we, uh, we hope that we can reduce the volume of plastic waste allow 0.8 million tons per year. And we can save the Waste management cost is allowed 3.9 billion baht per year. And we also can reduce the emission of greenhouse gas is allowed 1.2 million ton. Next slide, please. If, if you uh, study more for the roadmap, I can testify in the, in the five item importance. And uh, we succeed in the number one and two now. Um, uh, in the roadmap, uh, the, the first mitigation we banned three of plastic products in the last year. And we success is because uh, now we did not use the plastic capsule in the water bottoms. And we don't have the oxo degradable plastic in the market. And uh, we also not use the plastic microbe in the consumer products. And uh, another, uh, the second mitigation is very important and we start now. And we, we, we have the target to ban four other types of plastic by 2017. But if you go to the supermarket now, some, some activity we do, we, uh, is ongoing, we can say. Uh, by the year up to uh, 2022, uh, plastic bag less than uh, 36 micro, uh, micron in thickness, we not use in Thailand. And uh, we we ran the styrofoam food box, uh, plastic straw, and single-use plastic bag as uh, single-use plastic glasses. If you go to the super uh, supermarket and minimart now, 
they will not give you single use plastic bags and um, uh, uh, anyway but for the local market we still use it and we try to ban all of them in the futures another uh, three mitigation that support for this roadmap is uh, the, the the third one is the uh, 100 percent of plastic waste reusable by uh, 2027 and this this when we have the many campaign in the uh, in the med uh, many kind of the media include the online media also and now the government try to create the plastic uh, plastic waste database right? and uh, we campaign a lot for to help Thai people uh, behavior change but for my ideas for the research institute we can we said we, we found that to change the behavior maybe it's difficult but if we start for system change maybe better and after that, the, the behavior change will come later. Right? And this situation in Thailand now, uh, we can say the private private sector uh, uh, join with the, this uh, loss map very much. We have the PPP program to join uh, to give the room for the private sector do more in uh, these activities. And uh, uh, the private sector that's a move very well. Uh, in Thailand, is a uh, is a is a the, the business that uh, do, uh, uh, related to petroleum base. This is my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kwon. I think it's also very impressive to hear that the Thailand has a very concrete roadmap. Uh, you have already done the inventories of the marine plastics that you have found in the oceans. Uh, plastic shopping bag is uh, the largest one. And I, it's impressive to see uh, 2022 as a target for banning some type of uh, plastic, single-use plastics. And then 2027, you already plan like 100% uh, reusable for the plastic. Uh, thank you for sharing such impressive uh, policy actions and we look forward to further discussions. Now I have a pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Ta Din Ting, uh, Director General of the Vietnam's uh, Administration of Seas and Island, uh, Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment, uh, who will speak about marine plastics impacts and solutions in Vietnam. I have a pleasure to hand over the microphone to Dr. Tim. I will share the slide of Dr. Tim. I hope you see it. So please take a floor. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. I'm, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Masanori uh, and uh, Dr. Uh, Amy Gosanes uh, from PEMC and uh, our colleagues uh, to organize uh, this uh, virtual meeting. Um, uh, good morning uh, from Vietnam. Uh, so uh, uh, I uh, learned from uh, own uh, uh, your uh, speaking uh, and presentation is a very uh, interesting and uh, excellent uh, about uh, our efforts to combat the uh, marine plastic uh, in the region. Uh, so uh, my presentation, I would like to focus uh, on uh, some, uh, you know, the efforts uh, of Vietnam uh, to uh, combat uh, the plastic uh, marine uh, debris. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, uh, talk about the, our efforts uh, as an uh, international and regional uh, level. Uh, as uh, we know that uh, uh, Vietnam uh, is uh, one of uh, the most country to uh, discharge uh, plastic uh, uh, into the ocean uh, as the, uh, some country in the region. Uh, according to some uh, international research uh, study. Uh, so uh, we recognize uh, this uh, issue 
as a, a, a not only a national, uh, international, uh, global, original uh, program, uh, but also uh, it's a national and uh, uh, local level uh, program uh, in uh, Vietnam. Uh, so uh, we, uh, you know, uh, support uh, the UN uh, uh, 2030 agenda uh, of uh, for sustainable development uh, and uh, pledge to implement the goal uh, 14. And uh, actually, uh, our government has uh, some, you know, concrete action uh, towards uh, to implement the goal uh, 14. And uh, uh, we uh, actively participated uh, in the UN and uh, regional uh, and uh, global uh, um, event and conference uh, 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 regarding uh, this issue. Um, uh, actually, uh, we have uh, some contribution to this process. And uh, uh, also, uh, now uh, we are uh, actively uh, participate in uh, you know formulating uh, the global uh, agreement on uh, marine uh, plastic uh, uh, waste or debris and uh, uh, um, uh, actually uh, we uh, as uh, the G7 uh, soon uh, 2018 our uh, prime minister uh, has, uh, you know, declared uh, to support the formation of a global cooperation mechanism for reducing uh, plastic waste uh, towards a green and green ocean and free of uh, plastic waste. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, as a, a CF, SIG uh, assembly, uh, June uh, 2018, uh, we also uh, propose uh, the set up uh, or establish uh, the regional mechanism um, uh, for, uh, uh, partnership uh, for East Asia Sea on marine plastic waste management and <coughs> uh, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, for uh, you know, our efforts at the national and uh, uh, provincial level. Um, in uh, 2017, uh, Vietnam uh, officially uh, accessed to uh, UN Environment Assembly uh, of UN Environment Program Resolution on Marine Litter and uh, Microplastic. Uh, and we also have uh, uh, some contribute to uh, this uh, resolution of UN. And uh, for um, uh, domestic, uh, uh, we, as you know, uh, adopted resolution um, code number uh, uh, 36 uh, of the, uh, you know, the, um, the party uh, central uh, committee, uh, you know, uh, on uh, national strategy for sustainable development uh, of Vietnam marine economy to 2030 uh, with a vision to 2045. And uh, in uh, this uh, strategy, we, um, uh, you know, set up the goal. Uh, Vietnam uh, could be a pioneering the country in the region uh, to uh, combat uh, uh, the marine uh, plastic uh, waste uh, debris. And uh, we also uh, adopted uh, the National Action Plan for management of uh, marine plastic litter by 2030 uh, in uh, uh, early uh, 2019. And uh, I think that uh, Vietnam is the second country in the region uh, to adopt this, uh, the National Action Plan. And uh, uh, now we also uh, con con concrete design uh, uh, the National Action Plan uh, into the, uh, you know, the action plan of the province on uh, two, uh, you know, 28th 
a province a coastal a province uh, have the province uh, action plan uh, and uh, uh, recently uh, our prime minister uh, continue to issue uh, directive uh, on and uh, you know the 30 uh, 33 um, you know, uh, on the strengthen, the management reuse and recycling treatment and uh, uh, reduction of uh, plastic waste. And, uh, you know, uh, one, week, uh, one week ago, uh, our National Assembly uh, uh, adopted the law on environmental protection. Uh, uh, so in, in uh, this new law, um, we have, uh, you know, the one uh, article uh, spe specialized on the marine uh, uh, plastic. Uh, I think the, the that's, uh, now we uh, have the legal framework also. Uh, so, uh, you know, in the, in the near future, uh, we uh, continue to uh, uh, promote the uh, legal framework uh, on uh, this issue and uh, on uh, uh, another hand uh, we have so uh, many uh, uh, you know the, the degree and circular uh, and decision uh, by um, different uh, level government uh, uh, to uh, deal with uh, this issue uh, so in uh, uh, in uh, general uh, I would like to uh, uh, um, you know, to uh, introduce uh, our, you know, cinema um, uh, for the uh, mechanism uh, of plastic waste management in Vietnam. Uh, so uh, uh, we have the legal uh, instrument on plastic waste management, and uh, we have uh, some, uh, you know, um, instruments. Uh, here is the command control, uh, command control. Uh, instrument. Uh, so like the, you know, the uh, Prime Minister directive or uh, some of the, uh, uh, the ban and, and so on. Uh, and uh, we have the economic instrument. Now, uh, uh, you know, we put uh, this issue into the law on environment uh, protection. Uh, so uh, um, uh, uh, the time uh, to come, we uh, continue uh, con con uh, concrete design, uh, you know, uh, the economic instruments. And uh, we also have the technical barrier uh, instruments. Um, so now we also uh, are developing uh, this uh, instrument. Uh, and uh, final, uh, we have the communication and education. Uh, you know, uh, uh, as a national, uh, um, level, uh, our prime minister has, uh, you know, the uh, launch uh, the campaign, the big campaign uh, for the country uh, to combat uh, this uh, issue now. And uh, we have the program uh, uh, on the uh, communication, um, you know, on uh, plastic uh, waste, uh, and uh, uh, we also put. Uh, this issue into the some uh, education uh, educational uh, level as a high school or a primary school uh, also and uh, 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 you know uh, also now for the uh, research study research study we uh, um, uh, you know uh, now we are uh, you know prepare uh, to establish uh, an international center for uh, plastic, uh, you know, uh, plastic marine uh, debris. Uh, actually, uh, for this initiative, we also uh, propose at the Osaka, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, conference. And uh, uh, now we uh, also uh, cooperate with uh, Sapan and uh, other country to uh, promote uh, this uh, center. And uh, we do hope that uh, this center is the, uh, you know, the, some kind of the satellite center of the region and uh, global. And uh, uh, 
um, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> um, uh, next week or uh, we, uh, no, no, uh, next two weeks, we win the launch, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the big partnership uh, between the international institution and the business sector and NGO and government. Uh, as you know, that, that's the kind of a strong policy um, uh, to uh, combat the plastic waste. Uh, we, uh, you know, we uh, um, cooperate with the uh, web, you know, web, web, um, the uh, secretariat of the one's uh, economic uh, forum, uh, Davos, you know. And, uh, and now we also uh, to uh, um, uh, promote a f a financial instrument uh, to this uh, issue. Actually, yesterday um, we had uh, one session on the finance, uh, uh, finance, uh, uh, finance uh, resource uh, for uh, the plastic. So I just uh, I think that is uh, very interesting for us. And uh, is that uh, some uh, I would like to uh, present to you about the our uh, efforts. Uh, so uh, in conclusion, uh, I think that uh, this uh, uh, you know um, uh, global, regional, and national and communal um, program uh, that is the environmental program. Uh, uh, so uh, that we need to have the strong partnership at the own level, uh, you know, the global uh, level, uh, regional level, or national level, uh, and even at the communal level. So uh, uh, we strong uh, support uh, to uh, set up the regional partnership on this issue. On, and also we uh, strong support uh, to, uh, you know, formulate uh, the global uh, agreement on uh, marine uh, plastic debris. And uh, once again, I would like to uh, thank uh, Mr. Masanori uh, Kupayasi and uh, Mr. Amy Kusai and uh, to organize uh, this meeting and uh, thank uh, all our colleagues from different country and different organizations. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Tadin Tim, um, Director General of the Vietnam Administration of Seas on the Island Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment. It's very impressive to see all the action plans, strategies, and directives that are adopted. And now you are promoting the uh, idea of creating a center that can function as a regional hub uh, to promote uh, uh, actions and policies to eliminate marine plastic. Thank you indeed, uh, Dr. Uh, Tadin Tim. Now I have a pleasure to introduce uh, Ms. Leilani Gerardo, a communication manager of the Coral Triangle Center uh, based in Indonesia, uh, who will present marine plastics, its impact and solutions in Indonesia. Uh, Leilani, um, please take the floor. Thank you, um, Dr. Masanaro. I'm going to start my presentation now. All right, so um, thank you to everyone. I'm really interested to hear all your presentations and actions that are going on, very encouraging and very inspiring. Um, my name is Leilani. I'm the Regional Communications Coordinator here at the Coral Triangle Center. We are a nonprofit organization based in Bali, focused on marine conservation and capacity building working in marine protected areas across Indonesia, as well as in the Coral Triangle, which includes Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Philippines, Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, and Timor-Leste. Um, now I'm gonna delve into the topic of marine pollution um, as part of the global ocean plastic pollution that we are um, discussing now. So in Indonesia, um, in the last uh, five, uh, ten, five to 10 years, 
there's a lot of study that came out that puts plastic pollution into the national agenda. So the, I guess most of you are familiar with the Jambek study, which came out in 2015, which ranked countries that are leaking um, plastic uh, uh, pollution to the seas. And Indonesia was ranked the second highest contributor next to China. And this study basically paved the way for a lot of action from the government, from different sectors in the country to act on plastic pollution. There was also a study um, around the same time where in plastics were found in fish, um, in seafood samples in one of the fish ports here in Indonesia, in Makassar. And you know that Indonesia is a, one of the largest exporter of seafood um, across the world. So this is something that also um, was an eye opener and kicked a lot of action um, and studies um, to focus on the impact of plastic pollution into seafood and fisheries. At the same time, um, as Indonesia is a large fishing country, discarded or lost fishing nets also started um, uh, showing itself into the picture and its impact on fisheries, marine life, um, coastal resources, and that uh, provided a, a larger picture in how fisheries and seafood are affected by um, this global issue of ocean plastic pollution. And um, as for us here in CDC, we work in marine protected areas. And in these marine protected areas, we have a lot of cetaceans and megafauna, which is a draw for our tourism sector here in Indonesia. And we also found out in the last uh, few years, based on recent studies, that a lot of marine life charismatic marine life are affected by plastic pollution. Uh, for example, sea turtle species are one of the main Sea turtles uh, are the man, one of the main species that are affected by this. And manta rays, which is a big draw for tourism in Indonesia, are ingesting um, microplastics, uh, in, especially in uh, two very popular sites, like in Komodo National Park and here in Nusa Penida, which is close to Bali. So given all of this studies that came out, and um, it's an eye opener and really kicked the government, um, as mentioned earlier by um, Dr. Eileen from PEMC, that uh, government of Indonesia came out with an Indonesian National Action Plan, National Plastic Action Partnership, which had very um, ambitious goals to reduce plastic leakage to the ocean by 70% by 2025 and create a plastic pollution free Indonesia by 2040. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about this. There's a lot of literature online. Um, you can also download a very comprehensive report from the World Economic Forum. The link is in my presentation here. But I just want to shed light as well on the five, um, what's this, uh, actions that um, the government has identified to reach this very ambitious goal. So number one is to reduce or substitute plastic usage, um, basically to reduce um, household consumption of plastics. And this is quite, um, this is a, a medium term goal. So the goal is by 2025. And then redesign um, 500,000 tons of plastic products and packaging. So this is important to work with the private sector. Um, double plastic waste collection by boosting state funded and informal private sector collection systems. This includes, um, you know, waste pickers uh, deputizing informal sector to help collect plastic that's already out there. Uh, and again, the recycling system, uh, a lot of recycling systems in Indonesia focus are very community based. They're called bank sampa, waste banks. And so these are being deputized or strengthened to, to, to meet, to help the government meet this target. Double the current recycling capacity um, to 900, additional 975,000 tons per year of recycled plastic by 2025 and build or expand controlled waste disposal facilities um, to prevent the leakage. So these are basically out of this top five um, goals, there are several smaller, uh, smaller activities that the government is also implementing. All right. Um, in that national scenario, I would like to show uh, solution that um, CTC has been involved in, in collaboration with the Australian government, um, Terramar and uh, local government. Uh, this is basically a site-based pilot project, which we're very proud of. It's basically exporting ghost nets, recycled ghost nets from a fishing community in Merauke. Um, if you see Merauke, if you're not familiar, it's um, in the border of um, Indonesia and Australia in the Arafura Sea. 
um, which is uh, shared by Indonesia, um, Papua New Guinea, Timor-Leste, and um, Australia. So in this area, this is a very rich fishing ground and there's a lot of ghost nets or recycled or discarded nets that are being brought back by the fishing fleets um, that ply the, the area for fisheries. And what we did was we conducted a study on how all these ghost nets uh, made of nylon plastic um, are being lost and discarded in the ocean or just dumped in the shore. And also it, when once the waves come, then it goes back. So there were 13,000 abandoned, lost and discarded fishing nets coming from trawl and gill nets. And 80% of them cause entanglement um, of marine sea turtles. And you can see here it, uh, almost 7,000 <clears throat> uh, ghost nets sampled um, caught sea turtles. And also, this is the volume of the uh, the volume of the nets that are discarded every every year. So it's really a big problem um, for this area, especially in fishing areas in Indonesia, where um, all these ghost nets are just dumped and uh, after after they are used or they're not they're no longer when the fishermen find out that they're no longer usable. And then what we did was we established. Uh, local community supported, well, we supported a local community who is living in this fishing area um, in collaboration with the uh, London Zoolog Zoological Society of London using their model of networks, which was also quite successful in the Philippines. We um, uh, basically supported, trained the local community to help recycle these ghost nets, um, had cleaned them up, um, give uh, provided a made a study for a business case on how we can basically recycle and or upcycle these ghost nets that are lying there in their fishing area we prepared the community to uh, to process these nets so that it will be ready for export um, to another country basically uh, in Slovenia which is all the way to the other side of the world because at this time Indonesia doesn't have the capacity yet to process ghost nets into something reusable or something that can be made into um, more useful products. So we established the community groups, provided trainings, business plans, set up the infrastructure. And here we also collaborated with uh, the networks program of ZSL to test the nets, which nets become, or which nets are actually recyclable and are okay for for processing and we found that this type of net one of the types of nets that are there in in that particular uh, area is possible for for recycling and then working with the team this is this is basically the structure um three three community groups being trained like from the fishermen like the, the this is the this uh, the flow of of the goods and then we have uh call coordinated with this uh, aquafil in Slovenia, which basically produces um, recycled um, nylon from ghost nets and sends them to different manufacturers all over the world, like a lot of um, high-end uh, high uh, clothing companies like H&M and um, other, car for example, uh, carpet companies like Interface in London. For us, the, our ghost nets will be made into carpets after they're processed by Aquafil in Slovenia. So basically we set up this system to make it work and allow the community as well to earn from recycling ghost nets. And then we set up the infrastructure at the time. This was the first time it was done in Indonesia. So it was a bit of, it was very challenging to set up the system from, from cleaning the ghost nets, bailing, transporting them to the shipping company in Surabaya, which is in the central Indonesia from the Eastern part to the central part, having them ready, costing out the, the, the cost of um, the shipping and establishing that uh, basically that flow. And within span of three years, we were able to um, process 10 tons of ghost nets successfully exported to Aquafil in Slovenia. And the project ended at the time, but um, it continued on and additional eight tons were exported on the fourth year as well. So basically we set up that kind of um, system so that the community and the flow of goods will be able to, you know, to, we, we can, the, that kind of model can be replicated as well with other fishing communities in Indonesia that has a problem on ghost nets and um, 
Yeah, that's it. So as a as a whole, uh, to wrap up my talk, um, how the these are the solutions and actions that we'd like to propose is we need to invest in people who can make informed decision policies and transform businesses is exactly uh, is it to basically work with businesses and the private sector to generate revenues and innovative technology um, uh, to solve our own ocean plastic pollution issues. Uh, for us, it was crucial to connect the community and the, eventually the, buy, the, the business side of it was the, the person who will be shipping, um, the ghost nets, and then eventually the, the business that will be able to process that um, ghost net into something more useful. And without um, intervention, um, the community and the ghost nets in Indonesia will never be able to travel and become you know, all the way to the other side of the world and be made into something useful. And hopefully at some point we will be able to process ghost nets in Indonesia as well. Like that doesn't have to travel all the way to the other side. Document cost benefit analysis and present at policy and decision makers. Again, work with the private sector, create campaigns and connect with global coalitions. It was important for us um, doing the GhostNet project to work with um, the ZSL, who was doing a similar, the same project in the Philippines to learn about the lessons that they did there that um, were uh, useful in their context and how we could adapt that and how we could, um, you know, uh, prevent some of the, the lessons that are the, the failings that they had when they, they were starting out the project in, in the Philippines. So we learned a lot from them too. So I think that's all for now. And hopefully um, I was able to contribute to the discussion uh, uh, today. Thank you. And thank you, Rerani, for sharing the uh, action plans by Indonesia and also your activities to collect and recycle uh, discarded uh, fishing net uh, that we will come back. Um, I'm just uh, keeping eyes on the watch and uh, my apologies that uh, we are getting slightly behind uh, our time plan, but uh, I hope we can still manage uh, three, three and a half more speakers. Uh, now I'd like to introduce uh, Ms. Cherry Rita Kawa, Head Center for Coastal and Marine Environment, Marine Institute of Malaysia, to speak about marine plastics in its impact and solutions in Malaysia. Uh, Cheryl, uh, you have a floor. Thank you very much, uh, Masanuri san. Uh, and first and foremost, uh, I'd like to uh, mention that uh, I'm, I'm particularly happy that we finally managed to have this together with uh, OPRI. So we, we like to, on behalf of BIMA, I'd like to thank uh, OPRI as well as uh, PEMSI, uh, Amy. Uh, for having uh, invited us for this very important uh, discourse uh, uh, today. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I'll try to catch back on the time, uh, Masadori-san, because uh, I uh, am aware that we are only given five minutes with four slides, so I'll try to keep to that. Uh, so the topic given to me is marine plastics, its impacts and solution in Malaysia, and we've heard the same uh, rich uh, conversations from uh, some of our neighboring countries, uh, Vietnam, Thailand, uh, as well as Indonesia. So uh, for the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to just limit uh, uh, the, the focus in terms of uh, one of the projects that uh, Malaysia is part of. Uh, it's the Sea Secular Project under the UN Environment and COPC, funded by the Swedish government. So uh, MIMA is actually the uh, coordinating uh, entity for the policy working group. So I will try to present to you mainly on that, uh, what is uh, some of the efforts that we are taking in terms of policy. Uh, now, very quickly, you will see on these slides a couple of pictures, and uh, they're mostly from Malaysia, actually. You can see that you know, uh, the impacts that we're seeing with the uh, plastic pollution around the globe, uh, including mainly in this region, the Southeast Asian region. So I don't think I have to dwell too much on that because it has been mentioned quite uh, elaborately uh, in the previous presentations. Now, very quickly, in terms of the Malaysian context, actually, this came as quite uh, an alert to Malaysian government, uh, as well as the, the research institutions, including MIMA as a policy think tank in Malaysia, where we saw that you know, the paper published by Jembeck back in 2015 showed Malaysia to be among the top 10 polluting countries. Uh, we were uh, ranked at number eight 
so there were a couple of uh, ASEAN countries in here you can see and it was not definitely not a good news for us because uh, to our understanding we still lack the uh, baseline data and uh, a detailed understanding on what was actually happening in the marine environment so when we saw this it came as quite an alert uh, for the for the government uh, but nevertheless, the, the good, uh, the hindsight of it was that it actually uh, accommodated and facilitated quite a number of efforts uh, and actions at the national level towards addressing these concerns. And as all of us are already aware, uh, marine plastic pollution is definitely a very uh, topical issue now with a lot of projects happening in the region, uh, a lot of funding coming in uh, to address uh, concerns and priority areas uh, when we talk about addressing marine plastic pollution. Uh, and then uh, we cannot also run away uh, from uh, one of the other factors that has also contributed to you know, some of the related issues. When China actually banned uh, the imports of uh, uh, plastic and scrap materials back in 2017, uh, the other Southeast Asian countries became the target of uh, the imports. So that again actually contributed to quite uh, uh, an extent in terms of uh, addressing plastic pollution in this region. So it was not just the transboundary pollution coming from the sea and the large percentage coming from the land, but it was also those plastics that were then coming in terms of uh, imports uh, from other countries. So that became another challenge. And you might uh, have seen all these media highlights in terms of uh, Malaysian efforts to address this issue as well. Uh, 2018, right after that, the Malaysian government, uh, at that point, it was the, uh, the focal point was MESTEC. Uh, at the moment, it's the Ministry of uh, Environment and Water, uh, which actually came up with the Malaysian's roadmap towards zero single-use plastic 2018 to 2030. And, uh, after that, now we are looking at uh, coming up with a marine litter policy framework, as I mentioned, under the circular project uh, coordinated by MIMA in, in, uh, in cooperation with the Focal Ministry, Ministry of uh, Environment and Water. So this document is not yet ready, it's very much in progress, and you will probably be hearing about this more in the next couple of uh, months. Now, some of the issues, some of the drivers and causes that uh, we are considering when I talk about uh, coming up with a national uh, marine policy uh, framework, uh, it's very much in line with what COPC has highlighted, with what uh, PEMC has highlighted so far, with what uh, ASEAN is looking at. So we're keeping it very close to that uh, as, as the main drivers and causes that should be taken into account uh, to come up with our national policy. Because I think the issues are pretty much cross-cutting. It's the same issues faced uh, by most of the countries in this region, and hence, uh, we cannot run away from addressing those. Now, some of the main causes of plastic pollution, you can see here the three main ones, uh, as highlighted also before by PEMC and COPC, for instance, is the waste generation, the waste mismanagement, and the movement of waste, uh, pretty much. So most of the countries we see that, you know, among the countries uh, uh, making up in the top 10 polluters in the list that was uh, published by Jenna Jambak uh, shows that these are the countries with large coastal populations. So, uh, and you might also uh, acknowledge the fact that more than 70% of uh, uh, pollution into the sea actually comes from the land-based sources. So we definitely can run away from that fact. And then uh, the mismanagement, uh, mainly in terms of leakage of this plastic waste from the land into the sea, and the third point is on the movement, where there are also uh, plastics not just coming in from the rivers per se, but there are also plastics coming from other uh, marine activities like shipping, uh, fishery sector, which uh, Leilani has very much uh, covered in her presentation. And some of the drivers that has made these be to become a big issue is because of the rapid economic development, mainly in this region. Uh, there's a huge population growth in many of the coastal areas we can see. Uh, uh, urbanization, uh, but this is accompanied by the lack of uh, necessary infrastructure and services in, in some areas. Uh, for instance, if we talk about some of the islands, uh, I think Indonesia also has a similar challenge, like some of the islands in Malaysia, where uh, waste management is a bit difficult because you still have to transport it from the island to the mainland. Uh, so that again, uh, some issues uh, with, with those areas. 
uh, of course, we cannot run away from the human behavior. There's a lot of efforts put in into awareness and education raising similar to what has been presented before. Uh, but in some areas, there's also a lack of capacity and financing. In terms of financing, we're just glad that there's a lot of funds coming in now. But in terms of capacity, we're still trying to build this, uh, you know, better understanding among the stakeholders. What are the roles? Uh, where are the jurisdictions overlapping? And how can we actually uh, address the issues collectively? So that are among the things that we're looking at as some of the driving factors behind this Malaysian policy that you'll be seeing coming up uh, in the next couple of months. Now, some of the strategies, actions uh, that we are trying to uh, make as the main priority pillars behind this, again, you'll see it will be very much in line with other regional discussions because we cannot run away from that. As I mentioned, the key points is really to enhance, to reduce, to demonstrate good practices, as mentioned also by Amy just uh, in her presentation, a behavioral change and to come up with a solution. So having, maybe I can uh, briefly go on the first point, for instance. We see that countries are already members to most of the national, regional, international platforms, convention, treaties, agreements, and so on. Uh, even now, I, I believe we are already talking about the international treaty on uh, marine debris, for instance. So there's a lot happening, but we have to look back at the streamlining this international regional uh, uh, priorities or agenda into the national and local agenda. So one way to do that is uh, at the moment, we see that some of the countries are a bit uh, ahead with their own action plan, with their own uh, roadmap. And we hope to follow suit in, in that sense where we can then track our efforts, track our, our successes and so on. So these are some of the main areas that we are consulting uh, on and are hoping to put into this policy. Uh, some of the solutions and action plans, we hope these discussions will bring about uh, a roadmap for Malaysia. Uh, I was happy to see that uh, Vietnam, I think, already have a roadmap, uh, a, a quite a, a nice roadmap for, for their country. So we are looking at similar uh, uh, action where we would not just stop at the policy document, but uh, to also accompany it with uh, action plan and roadmap so that this is quantitative, it is tractable, and it will be able to monitor these efforts. So some of the areas that we'll be looking at at the same time when we discuss this policy is to look at the regulatory framework at the moment. There are different entities involved uh, at the national level, local level, uh, and municipal level. We need to try to streamline that and make sure that everyone is clear about their role in addressing this issue. Uh, we have to look into the waste management and recycling. We have to definitely continue with the research and investment on uh, alternatives, market-driven approaches, and so on when we talk about this issue. It's very broad. And we cannot succeed without the public uh, participation, awareness, and behavior. So that are some of the key elements that uh, would definitely be among the priorities that uh, Malaysia will be looking into. And uh, uh, having said that, uh, you know, the, the ministry alone or a, a focal entity alone would not be able to drive this into fruition. It would not be successful without continuous uh, consultations with everyone involved. The partnerships needs to be there and uh, to continue the engagements with everyone. So those are the things that is really the backbone of uh, this project uh, that uh, I've mentioned. Now, some of the for a country like Malaysia, where a lot has already been done and highlighted on this issue, I'll just mention that while we work on this policy, we have to make sure that, you know, we're not just looking at the land base, we're looking at the sea base side as well. And why I'm saying that is because Malaysia being a, a very active member country in IMO itself, and we are a signatory to uh, IMO's NX5, for instance. Uh, which addresses the pollution uh, from garbage uh, by ships. Uh, Cherry, sorry, I'm interrupting. I think uh, we are getting uh, out of the time. And uh, I just wondered if we can share the, your file uh, with the uh, participants and audience and uh, 
maybe you can just make a one point and then allow me to okay. move on to the next okay. speaker. Sure, sure. I, I appreciate that, Mr. Masanori. Just quickly to complete, I think I'll just run quickly. It's just one more slide left. So we're looking at the regional international uh, platforms where we need to streamline this with our national uh, policy and the regional one, the ASEAN framework, the COPC framework, and so on to come up with the mentioned national marine litter policy framework. And that's actually my last slide, Mr. Masanori. Thank you so much for your attention. Okay, thank you, Cheryl, and uh, my apology for rushing you. Um, may I invite now uh, Dr. Satoko Seino, Associate Professor, Ecological Engineering Laboratory, Graduate School of Engineering, Kyushu University, to present developments in solutions to plastic in marine protected areas in Tsushima Island, Nagasaki, Japan. Uh, my apology for enforcing this time constraint, but I hope uh, you can wrap up uh, within five or less than five minutes. Thank you, uh, Professor uh, Seino. Your microphone is mute. Uh, can you unmute mm -hmm. yourself? Okay, all right. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. okay. thank you very much for your, uh, yeah, giving a chance uh, to present my, uh, my and our colleagues' work. And I would like to uh, introduce our uh, development or in solution to plastic in marine protected areas uh, in Tsushima Island, Nagasaki, Japan. Uh, here you can see the Tsushima Island is located. Uh, can at the you same... share the screen? Um, okay. At the bottom, uh, you okay. press. Game okay. or kill you, uh, sharing screen. Okay, okay. Uh, sorry. And then choose okay. your right. side. I think, okay. yes. So, sorry. It's okay. coming now. Yeah, okay. Okay. You can make enlarge as a uh, presentation mode. Uh, yeah, excellent. Thank okay. you. Okay. okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, here uh, you can see your. Uh, uh, the, the island uh, uh, at the center of uh, international channel uh, between continent and Japanese archipelago. Here is Tsushima. Uh, I would like to introduce the situation of uh, this island, uh, especially on developments in solutions to plastic in marine protected areas in Tsushima Island, Nagasaki, Japan. Uh, Tsushima is located at the center of the international channel. Uh, then uh, you can see the, uh, the warm current uh, from uh, west, uh, uh, southern part of uh, areas uh, uh, go into the uh, channel and uh, bring a very huge amount of marine debris uh, over this, uh, to this island. And uh, uh, originally here is a very important place for fisheries and marine ecological uh, conservation. And uh, then uh, he, here, Tsushima is a very important uh, place uh, to, co to communicate and the fisheries and their uh, social, uh, especially uh, foreign communication. And the Tsushima city, uh, municipal government have started a marine uh, protected area uh, uh, policy uh, as a, a local government policy uh, in uh, 2010. Uh, you may know 2010 is very important uh, years to start biodiversity uh, policy uh, in the world, especially uh, for the sea. And MPA, uh, Marine Protected Area Discussion Hub, uh, promoted uh, to achieve its target, 10% uh, of the uh, world sea uh, should be uh, designated as Marine Protected Area. Then uh, this is Tsushima city uh, yeah, uh, very uh, uh, inspired such an international framework to achieve marine protection and also uh, sustainable use of fishery uh, species. Then uh, the, the city government started to uh, the uh, meeting uh, to organize uh, fishery uh, fishery sectors and uh, various uh, stakeholders in the island and to discuss and to plan a marine protected area. And then uh, at first, uh, so, uh, stakeholder meeting have started and the next uh, to, uh, uh, to study the, uh, the, the system of the sea around them. And a collaborative uh, survey 
uh, of oceanographic research are uh, uh, yeah, executed by uh, university and uh, uh, stakeholders, including coastal fishermen, and they plan to uh, how to manage the uh, sea around them by themselves, uh, Tsushima people, and also uh, based on such an uh, effort of this island call to uh, other part of Japan and uh, uh, in the future uh, call up and knock on the door of international uh, marine sectors. And uh, here is very serious place of marine debris. And uh, this is a representative data of, of Tsushima marine debris research uh, by uh, municipal government and funded by uh, Ministry of Environment of Japanese uh, Japan uh, government. And you can see your uh, various, uh, yeah, uh, very, how to say, uh, international uh, plastic bottle uh, drifted in and uh, uh, stranded uh, along the coast of Tsushima. And it is very simple uh, research and pre uh, correct uh, plastic bottles uh, around 10 and count where is it and by the uh, letters of the level and uh, barcode and uh, anyone uh, can uh, uh, judge the uh, product origin. And uh, uh, if uh, we uh, promote the, the effort of uh, eliminated uh, marine debris, maybe or, uh, such a amount of plastic bottles and uh, yeah, a composition of uh, countries of the product may be changed or, and uh, it is very simple. And uh, it is very un uh, good uh, data to understanding the uh, effect, effect uh, of ourselves at, uh, in the island and from Japan and uh, other uh, neighborhood countries. And uh, linking uh, coastal ecosystem management for uh, marine protected area, by especially our uh, um, fishery sectors, and uh, marine debris monitoring by inhabitant, uh, especially uh, uh, NGO and uh, a community based organization, support uh, to make data and uh, how to combine uh, sustainable use of the sea and uh, marine debris elim elimination. And the understanding uh, of local uh, local uh, uh, inhabitants and fishery uh, sectors uh, of, of the effect of international uh, effort uh, for uh, environment, it is a good chance uh, to find uh, how uh, we can do it uh, for ourselves uh, in ordinary life and how to call on the knock on the uh, what sector of a neighborhood country under a private company or our uh, yeah, makers. And uh, this is a very short uh, introduction and uh, Tsushima is one of the representative pro, uh, place uh, yeah, local government and the national policy and the international policy integration. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Seino. Now, with uh, further ado, uh, may I invite uh, Tenya, uh, Executive Director, Drivers Clean Action Indonesia. My sincere apology that uh, if you can try uh, your presentation for three minutes, that would be fantastic. So Tenya, you okay. have Thank you, uh, Masanori. Hello, everyone. My name is Tenia, and I'll try to be quick as possible. And I will present to you about the youth programs to combat marine debris. Uh, I'm coming from an NGO called Diverse Clean Action, and we are originally and located in Jakarta, Indonesia, but we have volunteers all across Southeast Asian countries. And uh, these are our main programs on what we do on combating marine debris since 2015, where we do research, and then we collaborate with the government to make the citizen science research on doing a mapping on uh, coastal uh, debris and underwater debris up on the website on marinedebris.id. And then the second program is we do campaign and workshop where we give um, fundings and also trainings for youth across Indonesia and Southeast Asian countries, which are free of charge. But then we are giving them grants on duplicating the programs that we do uh, on the capital city of Jakarta.
And then uh, we also do community development program where we adopt an islands or a coastal area to make sure that they are combating their marine debris um, um, greatly. Uh, by how? By making sure that they are implementing an integrated waste management system. So there are no waste that coming to the uh, ocean or leaking to the ocean due to their absence of waste management system. And the last uh, but not least is our program on doing a facilitating um, on EPR and CSR program with the private sectors, uh, where one of them is uh, actually we try to recycle the waste uh, that we found on the islands and uh, giving it um, to the mainland recycling centers uh, together with the private sector and turning the plastic waste into fashion items and then new mineral bottles and stuff like that. And we also try to make sure that the private sectors are reducing the, the waste from its source, uh, starting from uh, reducing straws from the restaurants all over Indonesia. We successfully uh, reduced 91% out of the single-use plastic straws. And then the other thing is we also do uh, refill stores, uh, local kiosks on the islands, uh, is uh, try to implement uh, and sell uh, daily necessities such as shampoos, detergents, and stuff like that, but in a bulk uh, concept. So people and the community of the coastal can actually go um, to the shops, uh, bringing their own bottles and jars, and then they will fill it uh, with our products. And it will uh, conclude that, uh, for example, in one island, it can actually reduce the amount of single-use plastic sachets or the small packaging of plastics up until uh, 3,000 sachets. So based on that programs, one of our uh, main area is in Thousand Islands. It's uh, the 11 islands located uh, off the shore of the capital city of Jakarta, which there are 11 islands on there and there are 27,000 people living on the area. So uh, before our program, uh, what been happening is this uh, the waste source from the households or the resorts or the fishing industries uh, is collected but not 100% yet by the government and then they will uh, be taken into the disposal site and then they will be shipped with a tra uh, transportation boat provided by the government and then they will be uh, recycled or proceed or dumped directly on the Jakarta capital city landfill uh, which placed in the mainland area so we think this is not effective and we realize there are the policies to make it more efficient and then we try to make sure that on the source itself it will be separated and then it will goes into the waste bags and the recyclers and the industries and the uh, the organics one can actually be composted on the islands so uh, this is the glimpse of what we do so we provided the uh, separated bins on the households making sure that they are actually separating the waste from its source together with the local youth and also the local government and making sure the recycling rate of the islands are keep getting higher and higher every month uh, with doing our projects. And we also uh, duplicating the shops, the kiosks that I told you before about uh, providing refill store options. So we are reducing the plastic single use um, packaging or sachets uh, directly from its source. And the other one is we also uh, realized it needs a stronger collaboration from each stakeholders uh, regarding from private sectors, the local government, even the national government, and also the NGOs and the local uh, residents. Therefore, every bi-monthly, every two months, uh, we conduct a multi-stakeholder forum to make sure that we can uh, assess and give a transparent report and gain a transparent uh, plan from the government regarding to the roadmap of waste management system on the islands. And the last slide would be, this is um, the glimpse of report uh, on just a year of the program. And we successfully changed the behavior of 2000 people living in the area. And we are growing into the other islands uh, in the Jakarta itself. And because it proved a successful of the stories uh, and also the support we gain from the private sectors and also the donors from USAID, uh, we are uh, looking forward to duplicate this program on the other 11 provinces of Indonesia. So in this year up until next year, uh, this program will also be accessible to youth on uh, 11 islands with the grants that we manage. And maybe to conclude, just a simple note, uh, I think youth can actually make a big difference, especially uh, regarding to its source on the islands directly or their own community to give a change and also to make a change on making sure there are no 
waste coming again to the oceans, um, but uh, they are they need uh, a little bit investment. Uh, so based on our experience for the past five years, youth should not be considered only as a token of appreciation or just like, okay, we need youth to make sure that this panel works, for example, or we need an investment such as the trust from the local government and the national government that youth can actually make a difference. And the second one is the clearance and transparency of roadmap and budgets uh, so we can access that information and we can give supports and recommendations based on our works with other uh, stakeholders. And the last one is the investment opportunities such as um, the access to knowledge, uh, the access to facilities, for example, to transport to waste uh, separately because it needs cost and stuff like that. But we need the policy to make sure that it can also uh, do the investment on their provinces, not only the big cities, or the big mainlands, you know, because Indonesia has 17,000 small islands, and I believe on the region of Southeast Asian countries also has a lot of islands and um, challenges on the transportation scheme of, of waste. And the last one is the network like this is really helpful for us to uh, make sure that our voices are heard and uh, our works can actually be duplicated and collaborated with. I think that's all from me, and thank you very much. Thank you, Tanya, uh, for um you know giving us uh, your use views and uh, i think i'm sorry that uh, we went over the time and uh, we have to conclude but just do, before doing so um i just wanted to show a few slides from mr kashimura uh, who was supposed to join us but unfortunately who could not uh, make it uh, due to the uh, like a prior commitment. So, uh, Mr. Kashimura's company, uh, Rain Bus, is based in Tokyo, Japan, and he is uh, trying to uh, collect a discarded fishing net and try to promote the um, the recycling of the fishing net. And what uh, his company is trying to do is, uh, I think um, my colleagues uh, in Indonesia uh, mentioned that they try to uh, uh, combat the dis collected discarded fishing net into the new uh, plastic materials that can be used as a kind of um, like uh, textile uh, uh, materials and also the plastic covers of the handy phones and some other automobiles and other uh, manufacturing parts. So um, there are uh, companies uh, also in Japan uh, that promote the recycling and I hope uh, we can still share the information to promote more effective uh, management and the recycling and the reduction of the marine plastic waste uh, in East Asia and the Tan East Asia, not as a, a source of marine plastic, but the a pool of solutions for promoting sustainable uh, plastic waste management and the reductions of marine waste. Um, just before conclude, maybe I invite Amy just to say a few words my sincere apology that we run out of time for the question and answer sessions uh, but i hope uh, we can have another sessions to continue this dialogue but uh, amy uh, please take uh, a floor to say a few words oh, okay well i just want to thank all the panelists and participants i think we have a wealth of information and i'm glad to hear that after three years of the resurgence of this global initiative to tackle plastics pollution. We have been doing a lot. Now, the, the, the challenge, uh, Masasan, is really how to capture all this and, and uh, make sure that we have a coherent and coordinated approach. Perhaps uh, we could push for a, a regional platform or you know, uh, to, to, to look at all these multi, multifaceted uh, actions uh, to tackle uh, plastic pollution. Thank you, and apologies uh, that uh, uh, we wanted to accommodate uh, all the uh, multi-stakeholder, and then so we ended up uh, with uh, no time. Or are, is there time for for question and answer? Sorry, Amy. Unfortunately, I have to apologize that the organizers uh, pressuring me to uh, the, you know conclude these sessions. We already okay. went over by more than ten minutes. And yeah. another session is now waiting uh, to take over our platform. Okay, I hope we can have a sharing of all the PowerPoint presentations. Yes, and uh, so I just uh, put my uh, email address in the chat box 
and I'll make sure that uh, I connect all the people uh, to for the follow up conversations, and I, I ask uh, all the speakers uh, to resend me the final version of the PowerPoint so uh, I can share and facilitate uh, dialogues and discussions among us. Um, anything to add, Amy? No, that's that's all. I mean, I think we should share each other's coordinates and PowerPoint presentations because I think there was a rich uh, materials there that we we gathered just from this uh, one and a half hour session thank okay. you everyone yeah so once again uh, everyone thank you for joining and uh, my apology that uh, we went out of the discussion time but i hope this means that uh, we have a lot of to lots to share and we have more time we need more time to share and uh, discuss our ideas. So once again, thank you uh, for your time and the participations, and I look forward to uh, future collaboration. Uh, until then, bye bye. Good day. Thank you. Bye, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Masa San. Thank you all for thank joining. You, um, thank you very much, Mr. Masanori. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, all our colleagues. Mr. Emmy Gonzalez. Yes, thank, thank you, you all for being with us today. Um, I wanted to let you know about the sessions that are upcoming. Please visit the Hubelo community to join the upcoming sessions, Parallel Session 9, as well as Parallel Session 10. Um, we look forward to seeing you there on the same platform. You're also able to look at the exhibitions or network with participants. Um, who are joining you in this session. So thank you all and have a great rest of your day. Take care, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.